Canvas size, DPI, 8-bit versus 16-bit color, print versus digital. Let's take a look at the do's and don'ts of Photoshop Canvas settings. I'm Abby Esparza with Photomanipulation.com and today we're covering Canvas settings and image exporting a tiny bit. And stay tuned till the end because I do have a nifty little action that might help you with that exporting part. But let's start things off with the most critical setting, and that is just straight up canvas size. And it might seem simple, you're designing a desktop wallpaper, and you want it to be future proof, so you type in 4K resolution into Google, bam, 3840 by 2160 pixels, copy, paste, done. Except now look at this beautiful high resolution image just being shrunk down to nothing. All that detail and all that room for added detail was utterly wasted. And more importantly, if you ever want to print, you'll be forced to size it back up again, which is a never the move unless it has to be the move. So what do we do? First, yes, use smart objects. That way we can resize all day and not have to worry about image quality. But what is the canvas size you should be using? The answer, your canvas should be as big as your base image or a combination of base images if you're doing landscapes cropped to the ratio of whatever you're designing for. We went from a typical 4K resolution to 9600 by 5400, roughly, uh, pixels that we can then export as a standard 4K image when we're done. Personally, I'm a portrait artist, so my canvas is never any smaller than the portrait's subject. That is going to be my bare minimum. Secondary answer, go as big as your computer will allow. Shrinking the canvas size is the last resort. I'll merge my layers before I shrink my canvas. But I know what it's like to edit on a potato, and that's also why none of my old images are available for licensing or printing. <laughs> Bringing us to DPI, which is directly tied to canvas size. So when talking DPI, we're going to change from pixels to inches, or your preferred measurement. Because DPI stands for dots per inch, and only matters when an image is going to be printed. And I mean that, it's completely exclusive to print. A 72 DPI, the standard quote-unquote web DPI, means literally nothing. You can change it to 6 DPI and nothing would change. DPI doesn't affect how your image looks online or how crisp and clear it is. Yeah, we were all lied to. So then what DPI should I be using if I do intend to print? The answer, 300 DPI is the standard for printing. I have seen people say you can get away with slightly lower, as low as 240, I think, but I say 300 will get you the best results for art prints. The critical thing to remember is that the higher the DPI, the smaller the print is without resizing. That's why we always want to create big. If you have an image set to 72 DPI and go to image, image size, change from pixels to inches, we can see that at 72 dpi, this image at full size will print to be 76 inches wide. But see this little resample option? With it unchecked, if we increase the dpi to 300, our image will now print at a width of just 18 inches. Notice how our image didn't change though. That's because the DPI setting is just data being held in the image. It's information for the printer to read. This is why when resample isn't checked, you can't even view your image's width and height in pixels. Pixels are strictly digital. DPI is what lets your computer convert pixels into a physical measurement. Your computer doesn't understand the physical world. It doesn't understand what an inch is. Now, if we want to change the canvas size, but not the DPI, check resample. Then we can say, I need this image to be 50 inches with a DPI of 300. The image will be resampled and in this case, enlarged. So the takeaway, if you know you're going to print, set it to 300 DPI. If you don't immediately plan on printing, don't worry about DPI until it is time to print. And when that time comes, uncheck resample to change only the DPI or check resample to adjust the print size, uh, whichever you need to do to get the image to be the size you need it to be at that DPI range. 
Next up, we have 8-bit versus 16-bit devs. And we're going to blast right through this since DPI was a time hog, and I do have another video that will touch on the same subject coming eventually. But in the meantime, which is better? 8-bit versus 16-bit. The answer, 16-bit, but 8-bit will work for most photo compositors most of the time. Because while working in a 16-bit depth will help push colors further without running into things like color banding along with other perks that come with a high tonal range, um, it's also going to double your file size and take twice as much processing power. However, I've never found working in 16-bit worth the slowdown that will eventually start to happen. Even smaller composites just drag out. I spent around $3,500 building my computer by hand, specifically with image editing in mind. And still, the trade-off of working with 16-bit color would mean me using either smaller images or fewer layers. And I just don't think it's worth it. However, feel free to give it a shot. It might work better in your specific workflow and style. Again, your images won't look different initially. What you get is a higher editing tolerance. When going to print or post to the web, you then go back down to 8-bit. Bringing us to exporting. This is more to clarify what I mean when I say create big and then shrink when exporting. That does not mean shrink when finished or shrink permanently at all. Uh, you should always have a master PSD that all of your print and web babies come from. During exporting, you might shrink or enlarge, change DPI, change bit depth, but none of this will get saved to the master PSD. Like I mentioned, I'm primarily web-based myself, and so I have a super simple action I created to help me prep my own files for posting to the web. It flattens, I choose a size, and then it does my preferred high-pass sharpening process. Just a little something something to bring back those details. They get lost when you shrink stuff down. Uh, you can check it down in the description for a free link, so you can use it too. Also, I'm clearly just trying to bribe you all to watch my videos now, because if you want a free tear painting brush set to pair with that free action, you can go ahead and check out my How to Paint Tears video. I'm Abby Esparza with PhotoManipulation.com. See you next time.